And this logo, it is this one for the Cochrane International Collaboration. Uh, this logo represents a meta analysis. Uh, so the meta analysis actually, it is this diamond here at the bottom of this uh, plot. So each horizontal line, it's an included study. The vertical line is a line of no difference. And this is the meta analysis, which is the quantitative synthesis of all studies. And this logo comes from a specific uh, topic, from a specific systematic review. As I said before, Cochrane developed first from the perinatal medicine, so pregnancy and uh, newborn baby. And uh, it was actually this topic, the administration of antenatal steroids to pregnant women at high risk to have a, a preterm uh, infant baby. Uh, and this is the, the, the 2020 update. So uh, many other studies have been published after that. And the, as you can see, again, this black diamond at the bottom, this is the meta-analysis. So we have all these studies here. We have 21 study, because we do three is 20. Uh, actually, we have this study, which is not informative, so a bit more. Uh, the diamond is correspond to this value. So this is a, a risk ratio, which is here, of 0 0.78. And there is a 95% cost of interval with, ranging from 0 0.70 to 0 0.87. So what does this number say? That there is a, a significant reduction in the outcome at the, at the, at the top of neonatal mortality by giving corticosteroids compared to placebo no treatment. How much? If we look only at this value, 0 0.78, this means if you make one minus this, this, might, this makes minus 22% 20 reduction. This is the meta-analysis here. And the, the concept is between minus 30% and minus 13%. Okay, so these numbers are visually represented here. This is the meta-analysis. So in this systematic review, which is the antenatal steroids to pregnant women, there are many outcomes, might be different comparisons. So in one systematic review, you might have 20, 30, even 100 meta analysis in one systematic review, because the material is just this uh, synthesis here. So this is the final uh, quantitative synthesis of, of all studies within this comparison, which is corticosteroid versus placebo, for this outcome. We, cannot, we can also see each of the studies included in the review and report this outcome. So we have more than 20 studies here, but we can see there are more studies that may not report this outcome or perhaps are not in this comparison, but another comparison might be, for example, uh, single dose versus double dose of corticosteroids, so no comparison placebo. Here we have these uh, studies, each row is a study, and we have all numbers, so many events of, in this case, neonatal mortality in the intervention group and in the uh, control group, and how many pregnant women were randomized in each arm. So in Cochrane, we normally like 99% of Cochrane reviews, there are more than 9,000 Cochrane reviews, and in, in uh, um, almost all of them, we do include only randomized trials, which means that uh, participants in the study are randomized. Uh, normally, nowadays, this is generated by the computer, in order to have uh, the same, uh, very similar business characteristics in the two groups, in this case, corticosteroids and placebo. And uh, so we can see, for example, for the first study here, which is a very old study, that we have not, well, more than uh, 1,200 women in total in this study. And we have these numbers, which is not significant because it's overlapping vertical line. And we can see the other studies. <coughs> the line is represented in the concept of interval. For example, this study, which is very small, only 44 women, we have a constant between a 0, 0, 0.7 and 15, so it's not precise at all. 
And because of that, the study is contributing very little to the meta-analysis. Yeah, so I, uh, today we don't want to learn everything about meta-analysis, but I think just because this is our logo and this is what Cochrane is well known is for symmetrically into the meta-analysis, just to have a quick overview about these numbers here. But we cannot ignore the quality of the studies. Actually, it's the risk of bias, which is slightly different than quality. But when we do systematic review since the beginning in Cochrane, we only will assess different uh, sources of potential risk of bias. For example, A and B, it's about the randomization process. C is about uh, blinding when the intervention is given. And then we have attrition by detection bias, so how the outcome is assessed. Not a problem for natal mortality because it's kind of an objective, strong outcome. But if, for example, the outcome is pain, or quality of life, the lack of blinding in those assessing the outcome make a big difference. And then we have attrition bias, reporting bias, and other biases. So this is the forest plot. It's called forest plot, it's a bit funny, but it's called forest plot because if you turn your head by 90 degrees, this, each study is a tree, and altogether it's a forest. That's why it's called forest plot. But uh, uh, this is the meta analysis here. And then we have the heterogeneity and the p-values and so on. And uh, this is an example to show the importance, why it's important to look at the risk of bias. In uh, this uh, review, which is not a review of me, but uh, I think that you see that this study is important this out, it doesn't matter what is the topic, but you, you can easily see that uh, most studies agree, have similar um, mean difference. In this case, it's continuous outcome. There's one study here, this, this one gives back 2012A, this study, which is uh, not overlapping at all. And here might be different reasons to explain this important uh, heterogeneity. Might be that the inclusion criteria were different here, or I don't know, the dose of drug was different, or the outcome was measured in a different way. But I think we can get a lot of help here from this. So the color, red color, means watch out, this is a high risk of bias. Green color is uh, no worries, this is low risk of bias. Question mark is bias, which now in the new risk of bias tool is called some concern. But red color is something bad, it's high risk of bias. And here, out of these uh, seven domains of risk of bias, five out of seven are high risk of bias. So for organization, for the lack of blinding when giving intervention, when assessing the outcome, <coughs> and also in the other biases. So if we look at the colors, clearly this study is the worst one in terms of risk of bias. And this study has completely different findings. So there is a very significant reduction in this outcome. That's why it's, uh, in any type of systematic review, it's important to do properly the quantitative analysis, so the meta-analysis, and that also to assess the risk of bias, because these things are, of course, closely and strongly uh, related. And here another example to show the same concept. Uh, this is a review from the from the Danish colleagues, uh, from the Cochrane Review, and we have uh, four studies here, and the five studies here, and they created a, a subgroup. So in the first group, they put the good studies, so the studies where randomization was done properly. And uh, uh, to, well, not only the randomization, but overall, you see the risk of bias completely green, so low risk of bias, so it's, it's good. No methodological problem in these four studies. And in these other five studies that you see most is red, so it's high risk of bias in multiple domains of the risk of bias. You, you have the legend to know what are these uh, uh, a, B, C, C, D, F, T, R, P, G. And again, there is an important difference. If we look at this one, so the high risk of bias, there is a significant reduction by 25% in this outcome, comparing screening to no screening. Whereas there is no difference if we look at the, at the study properly conducted. And even more important, if we combine all studies together, so we look at these four studies here, and these five studies here, you see here is the grand total, so the meta-analysis for all studies. It is significant. 
So it's very important to look carefully at the risk of bias, because if we don't do in this case, if we don't look carefully, if we ignore that some studies are good, some are not good, and we look only at this value, we might conclude that in this case, screening is uh, significantly reducing by 90% this outcome, which might be highly misleading because it's not the case in the study which are well conducted. This is a, a very old slide uh, from the Cochrane training material and training material. And uh, it's, a, it's a, the, this topic about the acute myocardial infection and intervention is given intravenous streptokinase therapy or, or placebo. You see there are 33 studies. And there are 33 studies here. In this case, it's odds ratio, it's a risk ratio, but it doesn't matter here. So the, the value of no difference still, of course, in number one. On the left, favorable treatment, which means giving the drug. On the right of the vertical line, it favors placebo control. You see 37,000 uh, patients included in these uh, uh, 33 studies. Uh, and in this slide, it's ordered by chronological age, uh, chronologically, so the oldest type from the 50s and the last one in the 88. We have also meta analysis here, which is this one. It's not a dime in this case, it's a different, but it, but it is a significant reduction because the meta analysis here at, at, at the bottom, and this small line here on the right, on the left, is because of interval. So, so clearly there is a reduction. Wow, fantastic. So we know that this drug reduce uh, mortality in people with their pneumonia infarction. What is the point here? Was it ethical to randomize 37,000 people to receive the drug or placebo people with a acute myocardial infarction? In the beginning, probably yes, when the evidence was not certain. But after a few years, there was enough evidence to understand that this drug is working well to reduce mortality. And if you know that something is working well to reduce mortality, you are not allowed anymore from an ethical point of view to randomize people to get the, the good drug reducing mortality or placebo. It would, it would be really uh, unethical. Unfortunately, what, there was no a systematic review done here. But if we look, I hope this will not be confusing, but if we look now at the same data, but represent in a cumulative way, which we normally we don't do this in Cochrane reviews, but just this is just to show the importance of systematic reviews. So if we look at this, we have that uh, each study it is summed. For example, you see here on the, on the left side, this part. It's a, like in the standard Cochrane review, so it, it, each study, we have 23 inf, uh, patients in this study, 42 and so on. Here it is cumulative. So if you do 42 plus 23 plus 42, give 65. So this is the combination of the first two studies. And then uh, uh, row number three, it is uh, 65 plus 167 makes 232. So here it's cumulative. So it's like that, I don't know, every time this new study, you are updating you make the meta-analysis by adding the data. What is very clear here is that the more data you have, so year after year, so beginning at just 200 and 1,000 and 10,000, so on, the more data you have, the sample size is higher, the statistical power is higher, so we are more precise, which means the constant interval becomes smaller, more narrow, narrower and narrower. And which means that in the beginning it was so significant, but then after, let's see, already in 73, it was a significant reduction. With a wide constant interval, here was uh, better, and here even better, and they're fantastic, right? Very uh, precise estimate. So, if a systematic review would have been done already in the 70s, this could have avoided to expose sick people with medical infection to get placebo. So because of the lack of systematic review, many people died. 
because, uh, because of the lack of systematic review, clinical uh, researchers continue to randomize people uh, to either drug or, or placebo. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, shows the, 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 the strong impact of systematic reviews. Uh, of course, it's very easy to make something wrong because you need to, to compare the studies where the population is similar, where the, the, the drug is given is in, the, in, the, in a similar way, so to be aware of the possible clinical heterogeneity, how this study can be conducted. 